Hello and welcome to Saints Online. You're about to hear a message that's part of a series. Check it out and consider joining us in person on Sunday. We pray that as you listen, you'll be equipped for the season of life you find yourself in, that you will grow in your hunger for God and discover His unmatched love, grace and plans for your life. Get in touch with us at saints.my/hello for more details on the program and resources we have to help you discover more of God through our church. Make sure you subscribe to our Saints YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss any of our weekly content. Enjoy this message from our lead pastor, Joe Bird. Hey everyone, a huge welcome to Saints. This is our online stream where we recap some of the preaching that we're talking about in church. And my name is Joel, I'm the lead pastor here along with my wife, Emma. And it's just so good to have you here joining us, learning about the Word of God together. And if you don't have a church to call home, then we are so keen to meet you. Come on down any Sunday. Uh, We meet at 11 a.m. in PJ in the heart of KL. Uh, we'd love to see you here for one of our services. And it, it is just so good as a Christian to have people who you can journey along, uh, walk alongside, join a dinner party with, which are our small groups, and discuss the Bible, eat, read, and pray together. I just don't know where I would be as a Christian without great community around me. So you need that too. If you haven't got a church, then plant yourself and find somewhere that you can flourish, either this church or one of the many great churches around the city. And also, if you're joining in from our church, just if you're overseas, you're sick, you're traveling, then a huge welcome, and I hope this is going to help you catch up. Uh, We're looking at the book of Daniel this month, and so I want to encourage you to go on a reading plan through this book, uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible for so many reasons. And we're looking specifically just at Daniel's convictions as he stands there in a foreign culture, Um, If we recap the story, he's been taken away from his home culture into a foreign culture of Babylon, and he's learning how to be faithful to God in the middle of a world that is against God. And, you know, we as Christians have to learn how to do this all the time. We're learning how to be faithful, how to have conviction, how to stand on the word of God, even though our boss, maybe our family members, maybe people around us don't believe what we believe. How do we still stand firm but love well? in a world that doesn't believe what we believe. And so Daniel is gonna help you so much. And I just wanna speak for a couple of minutes today, a message that we brought to our church called Fighting the Good Fight. Fight the Good Fight. And I just wanna, first of all, talk about men. Um, Women, not to put you to the side, but you can be involved in this too. The men listening today, you are wired and gifted by God to fight the good fight. This is a verse that comes from Paul to Timothy in the New Testament. We need godly men. We need godly fathers. We need godly bosses. We need godly businessmen. We need men. We need great women too, but I want to specifically for a couple of minutes just address the men. Um, Because men, you've been wired by God to fight. Now, I don't think you may consider yourself as a classic fist fighter, but like it or not, you've been wired by God to protect, to defend, to advance, to build, to tear down, to uproot. You've been wired to fight. Now, I can only really remember one time that I was almost in a fight. Back in secondary school, our school bully came into the corridor and he looked up and down the road and he he saw me there, standing there with a small smile on his face and he came up with that kind of aggressive look, you know, like bullies do. And he came up and he got his fist and he, you know, started to throw it at me. I dodged out the way of this fist being flew at me as quick as I could. And then I ran for my life as fast as I could. And that, I think, describes most men who are watching this. You know, we're not classic fist fighters, but that doesn't mean that you aren't wired by God to fight the good fight of faith. And there's a, you know, a great quote here that just says, Satan wants to make strong men weak, but God is the master at making weak men strong. And I think it's just the plan of the enemy to try and weaken men and try and pull us away from the fight. But God has got a vision for you to stand firm in your world, to stand firm in your family, to stand firm amongst the people that you are leading and influencing and be a man of the fight, be a man who can stand up. And I wanna just talk about Daniel in that light today. Let's read a couple of verses from Daniel because he was a man 
who knew how to fight the good fight of the faith. Uh, We'll start back and just recap a couple of verses in the book of Daniel, but let's look just first of all together at Daniel chapter 1, verses 5. After Daniel and his friends have been taken into Babylon, it says this, that the king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table, that they were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. So the context here is Daniel is here in a foreign land, and the king is sweetening the deal and trying to warm Daniel and his friends up by giving them great food, great wine. Here's something that was, is going to help you. And, and Daniel stood up to this. You see there in verse 8, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. I mean, just get the context. Daniel probably hasn't had a good meal in months. It has been a long time since he's had a good meal. Uh, It's been a long time since he's eaten good food. And imagine a spread, a banquet of wine, of chicken, of beef, of beautiful things. But Daniel realized that what was going on here wasn't just a physical food. This was actually something to indoctrinate him. Uh, Babylon was trying to pull him in and warm him up to the culture. So Daniel, watch what he did. He simply said, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut myself off from this plan of this enemy force, I'm going to cut myself off. I'm not even going to walk down the path of enjoying this food. I'm going to resolve not to defile myself with royal food and wine. So the lesson here that we learn is that Daniel avoided this battle of temptation. He avoided it by not going into the battle completely. And men, just to address it for a second, we have temptation all around our lives. Uh, We learned last week that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and he wants to try and get down into your world and destroy things by tempting you into stuff that is being unfaithful to God. That's what temptation is, by the way. It's just the invitation to be unfaithful to God. And I want you to look at what Daniel did. Daniel said, I'm not going to even walk down the path. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man who does not even walk down the path. He doesn't walk in step with the wicked stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. That was Daniel's resolve. I'm not even going to walk down this path. I'm going to say no before the battle has even begun. And look what happened. Verse 15, at the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. And so the guard took away their choice food and he gave them uh, vegetables instead, the first vegan diet that you've ever had. To these four men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. Here's what Daniel did. Daniel's strength in public came from his choices in private. Even though everybody else was enjoying this food, Daniel resolved, I'm not going to defile myself. I'm going to make the hard choice in private so that I can have a public strength. He looked healthier and better nourished before everybody else because of what he did in private. And our public strength is going to come from our private choices. Our public success is going to come from how we stay faithful to God when no one else is watching. And I want you to remember this today. Would you stay faithful in the private places so that you can have a strength and a resolve in public? You know, uh, too many men live under shame because we've made bad choices behind the scenes. And in public, it saps us of our strength. But God wants us to win in these areas so that we can walk into any situation. We can feel like we have moral authority, that we stand before God with a clear conscience. Now, here's the issue. So many of us have made mistakes in private. And what do we do then if shame is the thing that has wrecked us and held us back? Well, here's the thing. Shame does make us weak. And the enemy uses shame shame about what other people think, shame about what you've done, shame about your failures to try and make you weaken, to try and stop you from stepping up to the good fight of faith. But just as shame makes you weak, again, God is the master at making weak men strong. And it's why God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross, that his blood would be poured out to cover all of our sin, that his grace and mercy would run like a river over our lives, that we could be completely Uh, redeemed, released from all shame, shackles gone, chains gone, and we could stand as new creations, healed and whole, totally free from condemnation. Jesus became weak 
so that we could become strong. What a beautiful message the gospel is. And that's for you today. If you're struggling with shame, come back to the cross and let the cross defeat the shame that you've been harboring in your heart so that you can have a public strength all over again. I just wanna give this call to any men today who you're struggling with shame. Maybe you haven't lived like Daniel lived. You can decide to live like Daniel did in the future, but looking back, looking at all the mistakes you made, the failures you've done, what are you gonna do? Come back to the cross. Come back to Jesus. Come back to the beautiful gift of grace and mercy that is poured out. Hebrews said, let us then approach the throne of grace boldly. Boldly approach God today that you may find grace and mercy in time of need. If you do that today, you'll find covering of all of your sin. You'll find a brand new start in Jesus Christ. And you can join us in fighting the good fight once again. Get back on your feet, get back into the arena and be the man of God that he's called you to be. So God bless you guys. Thank you for joining here today. We love you and uh, we pray we'll see you in church real, real soon. God bless you. If you enjoyed this message, check out more on our Saints YouTube and podcast channels. For those who want to know more about Jesus, find a Christian community to be part of or you're exploring faith, why not join us this coming Sunday for our 11 a.m. service? We are a growing vibrant church in the heart of Pataling Jaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, with an interactive kids program for two to 12s, facilities for parents with under twos, and freshly brewed coffee available from 30 minutes before each service. We are confident you'll leave encouraged. Find out more on our website, scenes.my, or follow us on Instagram and Facebook now. We can't wait to host you.